The Whiskey Rebellion was a is, is a great example of how governments are not uh, voluntary. How really the state the the the, the 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 conquest theory of the state applies because you had a lot of Westerners, not just in West, Western Pennsylvania, but in the Western regions of all the states. You got to imagine the the, the very the the, the the extremity, the very Western part of the United States during this time period was the Mississippi River. They were very upset at the federal government's sort of uh, supposed lack of care of them. They were upset at the Bank of the United States. They were upset at the assumption of these federal and state debts at par. And they were especially upset at the uh, federal government's um, uh, whiskey tax, or a, a re- which was a regressive tax. It fell mainly on poor Westerners to fund some of these uh, the, the assumptions of state debts. Now, Hamilton had said in the Federalist Papers that these what were known as internal taxes, so you can imagine uh, not tariffs, uh, the taxes that aren't tariffs on foreign goods, they wouldn't really be used that much. They would be confined, I think in his words, to a narrow uh, compass, sort of a narrow boundaries. Of course, that was before the Constitution had to be ratified. So now uh, he's going to decided to to push for higher taxes, um, you know, push for new taxes on whiskey, etc. Westerners were very upset about that. There was a lot of disobedience, uh, you know, the, some the people gathering some rumblings in, 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 in near Pittsburgh, or which is back back in the day, you know, very small town, etc. So Hamilton is urging Washington to sort of suppress the rebellion. So they basically drag about the 13,000 militiamen and then some others uh, to Western Pennsylvania to, to make a dem- show demonstration of the government's uh, power. And one of the reasons they did this, I, I didn't explicitly mention this, but you, 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 you alluded to this, was that during this time, um, the, we, we were trying to set our foreign relations with o- other governments. So there was the, the famous Jays Treaty that was being in the, in the process of being negotiated this time. And Hamilton really wanted to sort of flex the muscles of the United States to show that, hey, uh, we're, 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 we're tough just like you guys because we can bully around our citizens, so, so to speak. I, you know, it, it doesn't really help his case, but I think it sort of illuminates some of his motivations. Um, the, the, the rebels disperse. Hamilton uh, was basically in charge of the soldiers for a long period of time after Washington left. Hamilton wanted to, uh, Hamilton and his forces, they wanted to round up some of these uh, suspects or accused agitators. One of them was Albert Gallatin, a former anti-federalist. Hamilton and some others, they wanted him and his supporters to be really tried. And then uh, back then, this this disloyalty to the government uh, could be met with by execution, by death. Uh, not, not, th- those don't happen, but Gallatin gets the picture and he gets kind of scared. But it, it, it's, it's a great example of how the, the government, you know, it's a great instance of cronies. And the government first assumes state debts, right, which benefits a lot of speculators, and they pay off these state debts by raising taxes on poor people, right? And these poor people resist. The government sends in the gendarmes to, uh, st- to stamp them out, right, the, the, the military, and it shows that Hamilton really had, in my, my, my view, he had bigger ideas than just being a secretary of the treasury.